uh, Ms. Fisher here talking a little bit about unreliable narrators. And so the first thing I want you to do is um, I have a series of questions up here on the screen that uh, just kind of get our discussion started. Some things that I want you to ask yourself. Have you ever stretched the truth to make yourself look better in front of a peer? So I'm going to give uh, some situations and just, you don't have to describe anything or anything down, but just think to yourself, how do you think you would respond? Um, and be honest with yourself. The first one is your girlfriend or boyfriend breaks up with you. Do you tell your friends that he or she initiated the breakup or do you bend the truth to make it look like you broke up with him or her? Uh, second one is everyone in the class gets a 95 or above on a test, but you get a 55. Do you admit to everyone that you flunked the test or do you pretend that you did as well as everyone else? And the third, you get in an altercation with an acquaintance who makes you look silly in front of others. Do you retell the story to your friends, making yourself look like the dominant figure in the argument, or do you admit the truth? So this is, these are just some questions to get you thinking about how might someone be considered an unreliable narrator? So I'm going to um, just present you here. The question uh, to ask yourself is, do you always know what is true? And do you always know what is false? Um, for example, you get a text from someone and they say, I just got your text. You don't know if they're, they're telling the truth or not. If you don't have the, the, the read receipt on the text, they could be saying, really, two hours ago I got your text, but I just didn't feel like replying. Or uh, someone says, sorry, I'm busy Friday night. But really, they're not busy. They just would rather waste time on Facebook, well, maybe that's a little outdated Instagram, than to hang out with you. Right? Or maybe they say, I promise I won't tag you. Um, and then you think, yeah, right. Um, so sometimes people just aren't telling the whole truth. Um, you know that when you have some of those other situations, like I just described, someone saying they're not going to tag you in the photo, or if they said, sorry, I just got your text, you don't necessarily believe them. You don't believe everything you're told. And so you shouldn't believe everything that you're told by a narrator of a story either. And this is what we call an unreliable narrator. Um, this is when you have the author um, who gives us what he wants us to see, to actually see, um, versus what the narrator tells us. And we need to fill this intentional gap with our own reference. It's important to know that the author and the narrator are not necessarily the same. In our case, we have Nick Carraway, and he's not necessarily a representative of Fitzgerald, who's the author, and vice versa. So why use an unreliable narrator in a story? Uh, first, it's fun. It's an unconventional approach. It can sometimes surprise the reader, and it also helps us understand the power of perspective in literature. So an example that you may know, maybe you remember reading um, John Sheska's children's book, from the Big Bad Wolf's perspective, the wolf explains uh, how his explains his behavior, um, and we question whether we should believe him. Right? So the story is told from the point of view of the wolf, and he says, "I was just trying to get a cup of sugar so I could bake my grandmother a cake, and when I had a really bad cold and I sneezed, the houses fell over, and so I just thought I can't let a good pig go to waste, so I'm going to eat them." And he tells us a, a very funny, different spin on the Three Little Pigs story. And we're not really sure if we should believe him or not. Maybe something that you uh, haven't heard of before is this 1950 Japanese film, um, Rashomon, tells the story of a horrific murder from four different eyewitness accounts, all of which contradict each other and make us wonder about the nature of truth. Actually, I ended up winning an Academy Award. Um, so, if you, these are actually both on YouTube if you want to find them and watch them on your own time. So there are different types of na uh, unreliable narrators. The first one is that we have a liar or a criminal. Um, for example, in Edgar Allan Poe's uh, Cask of Amontillado, maybe you read that in ninth grade, um, he's actually a, a murderer, uh, which is why we cannot uh, trust him as a narrator. 
The other kind of unreliable narrators um, are the mentally ill. Um, for example, Chief Romden, uh, who's a schizophrenic mental ward patient in the film One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Another reason why you may not trust the narrator of the story. So some similarities between the two, between someone who's mentally ill and maybe someone who's like a criminal, um, may have narcissistic tendencies or a disdain for authority, but these narrators have very different motivations in sharing their stories with us. Uh, number three, we have young, innocent, or inexperienced narrators, such as Scout from To Kill a Mockingbird. And we also have uh, narrators that have access to limited information. And this is our uh, narrator here, Nick Carraway. He seems to be a pretty honest guy. We seem to be able to trust him, but we also need to remind ourselves that he doesn't actually know the whole story. We're only getting it from his point of view. Another type of unreliable narrator are those who can process only limited information, um, such as uh, the curious incident of the dog in the nighttime is a mystery narrated by Christopher John Francis Boone, who is a 15-year-old boy with autism, or Flowers for Algernon by Daniel Keyes, a story of a brain surgery experiment gone awry, and it's told via a series of progress reports. So it can only process, they're only being able to process a limited amount of information from these particular texts. Uh, number six, someone like Halden Caulfield from The Catcher in the Rye. Um, these types of narrators have actions that aren't consistent with what the narrator tells us. So they, the narrator might tell us one thing, but then they go right out and do the opposite. And Holden Caulfield is an example. I don't know if you've uh, read the novel. We probably were reading part of the novel this year ourselves. So here's another example. Um, so I'm gonna flip through this. Um, it's very popular in TV um, or in film. For example, we have Forrest Gump. Um, he would be considered a unreliable narrator um, because you know we're hearing it from his point of view, and also maybe uh, ability to only limit. Uh, our ability to only process a certain um, amount of information. Someone from like uh, A Beautiful Mind, um, he would be considered someone who is um, kind of on the fringes of society um, and have a different mindset and a different way of looking at things, so it may be considered an unreliable narrator. How I Met Your Mother, um, I don't know if you've seen this uh, comedy show. Um, but it's told from the perspectives of all these different people, um, and mainly this uh, fellow right here. And so you're getting limited information, and you're also getting multiple perspectives. Fight Club, um, mentally ill narrator. So how can you know if a narrator is lying to you? You're told to uh, read with a critical eye. Um, first, compare the narrator's words with his or her actions. If there tends to be a discrepancy, then maybe it's time to question whether or not the narrator can be trusted. Uh, two, check new information against facts from earlier in the story. Again, look for discrepancies. Does everything add up according to what the narrator is telling you? Three, apply what you already know about the world. Um, you may be young, but you know quite a bit, so trust your judgment. And that is the, uh, oh, and this is, we're going to leave that here. Uh, this is the quick notes on Unreliable Narrator. So what you'll do next is you will go into your Unreliable um, homework sheet, and the directions tell you to complete the following worksheet by listing in each column Nick's relationships to other characters, his opinions of others and events, and whether you believe he is a reliable narrator. At the bottom of the worksheet, write a paragraph, or just it's just a short paragraph, um, that explains whether you feel Nick is reliable in recounting the events of the novel so far. So be sure to include the following. One, how does the choice of narrator influence your understanding of the novel and events? Two, if you had to choose a narrator, what kind of individual would he or she be and why? Three, would you choose another character in The Great Gatsby to narrate the story? Or 
and four include examples from the text to support your answers. So the first thing you're going to do is in this column you're going to um, write down narrator's relationship or Nick Carraway's relationship to other characters. What are Nick Carraway's opinions, his likes, dislikes, and biases? Um, what is his reliability? Knowing what you know about the narrator, how can you trust what he is telling us and why? And then on the back of your sheet of paper, just write a quick paragraph describing whether or not you believe Nick is a reliable narrator and answering these four criteria here. Um, if you write one sentence for each one, you'll have yourself a, a good solid paragraph. Um, thanks for watching the, this video and we will see you tomorrow.